Today, we're checking back in on Carbide Create 7. We're going to be looking at build 756, and we're going to take a look at some of the features we didn't cover in the last video. We're going to look at uh, where the current state of exporting G code is in the free version. And third, heh, third, STL import. That's right, 3D import now. So we'll walk through that and we're gonna talk about a few other things. Let's not delay any longer. Let's get into this video. In the initial CCV7 video, we talked about the create tool paths from current selection or layer, text on an arch, vector tabs, and more. So let's take a quick look at some of the other new features that are currently available. In the design tab, we have arrays so you can duplicate your cuts easily or easily make a unique design. Pair this with the refined bowling selections and you are on your way to creating some interesting designs. Also in designs, we can measure the distance between two points. You know, sometimes it's just the small things in life. Taking a look at tool pass, did you notice there's a keyhole now? I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to dive into that one yet, but that may be of interest to some of you out there. Two other new features are ramping and rest machining. Ramping is a very nice addition to help preserve your bits a little bit longer. Just select the ramping box in the tool path and set your entry to green. That's it, as simple as that. Rest machining is gonna let you clean up those finer details in your pocket cut for this, select a smaller size bit, check the rest machining box, and enter in the previous bit diameter you used for your pocket. Now, as you can see, it's not going to be so rounded. It's going to have a nice, a flatter curve. Of course, we're dealing with circular bits, so inside corners, you're going to get that. One of the things that was not working for me at the time was the ability to import STL files. You know, 3D carving or 2.5D, whatever you want to call it. Well, it's working now, and we will go over that. But first, let's talk about G code extraction. Since the release of Carbide Create V7, there have been some changes to the software that have affected how we extract G code. Now, if you have the free version of CC7, you can upload your design file in the C2D format to this link and the website will generate the G code for you. You will have to set up an account with them to use this, but hey, you can export G code. There was a comment on the last video that said to import the V7 C2D file into V6 to generate the G code. Well, I was going to say that I tried several test files, but by just saving as, then say this doesn't work. Well, it helps if you go through all of the options in the file menu. Just two more options down. There is save as v6 file. Now this is for designs, not toolpaths. So do your design work in v7, save as a v6 file, create your toolpath in v6. If all of that seems too much, you can always just download version 6. Just remember that v6 will receive no new updates, no features or support. So as of this filming, this is the state of CCV7. Remember, things can change. Like being able to import STL files. Let's talk about the 3D functionality. When version 7 first launched, I was really excited about the STL import feature. But didn't have too much luck with it. But coming back now, and it's working well. So let's go ahead and do a test import of an STL file. And just run through kind of the import, setting up the different tool paths, and then how to save it. And the model we'll be using for this is Melting Face by Davison 3D from Thingverse. And I picked this model as it had a nice flat back and I just really liked the design and thought it was pretty cool. And I also wanna remind y'all, 
3D modeling is only available in the pro version of Carbide Create, not the free version. All right, so to get started, first thing we wanna do is the setup. For this, I have it set to 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters and our thickness to 12. We're gonna to wanna to scale out how big we want this and when we import it, it's going to scale our STL to this size. Now, not necessary thickness, but at least our height and width. And go ahead and change and make any changes you need here for the way you like to have this set up. We're gonna hit OK. And now we're gonna go over to the model section. We're gonna come over to the third option here, the sphere, and we're gonna import an STL. For this, we're using the old man splash final. And as you can see, it has imported to the exact size of our stock material. And you can see here, this is just a little bit over what it normally is. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down to just keep it at its original size. Now for the height, this is how high you want your 3D uh, or your 2.5D carve to be. In this case, if we kept this at three, the final product would only be three millimeters tall. Since we're using 12 millimeters, we're gonna go ahead and put 12 in there. We want this as tall as we can be. So let's go ahead and look at the 3D. Wait, it's still flat. That's because I haven't hit apply. We made all these changes. So first we need to hit apply. Hey, hey, you see that? Now look how thick that is compared to the original one. So you can make all the changes you want. You need to hit apply. Remember there is no undo or anything like that. So once you hit done, you're gonna lose a lot of these uh, abilities to change stuff. So only hit that when you're ready. Otherwise you're gonna have to get out of here, delete everything, re-import it and re uh, redo your settings. But I'm happy with this. We're gonna go ahead and click done. And there we go. We got our component one, our melting face. Now let's go over to tool paths. And here we have the 3D rough and the 3D finish. The rough is our first pass. We're gonna use a bigger bit here to hog out a bunch of that material and just uh, and leave enough for where it's gonna put less stress and work on our finishing mill. So we'll hit 3D rough. I don't have anything selected, so we'll select by layer, hit okay. We'll come in here, select. We're gonna use this 6.2 millimeter uh, bit right here. For step over, I'm gonna drop this down a little. Let's just say two. There we go. And toolpath stock to leave, how much stock to leave above your cut. We're gonna leave half a millimeter. And then we'll hit okay. There we go. Now we can, uh, Look at this simulation real quick. There we go. This is our rough cut. And so we can kind of see the definition of the face, but again, we're just getting out a bunch of that material. So we our tapered bull nose bit can actually make this look like a melting face. All right, let's go and set that up. So we'll hide that. We'll click on 3D finish. We're gonna select by layer. We only have one. Okay. We're gonna edit this. We're gonna to go to select tool, come down to V-carve. That's where I have this tapered ball bit I'm gonna be using. We'll select there. Now, in the finishing tool pathing for uh, your 2.5D carve here, the step over rate for your finish pass is important. The larger it is, the less detail, less refined it's gonna be. The smaller, the better detail. So let's actually, let's just look at what 0.4 step over on this 0.88 tapered ball mill is. We'll hit okay, hit okay, and then we'll show the simulation. And you can see we got some grooving in there. And really you can see a lot of the lines. So let's go back to finish tool. We're gonna 
edit, come over to step over, let's go 0 0.2. We'll hit OK. OK. Let it recalculate. And of course, it's going to take twice as long because you're doing twice as many lines. We're going to do show simulation. And hey, that looks a lot smoother. There's still some lines there, but that looks like it. that's going to be a lot easier to um, sand out. So we could shrink this even more and we could go to point one step over. But for our purpose here of just experimenting and playing around with this, we're fine where we're at. Now, let's say we want to cut this out so we can hang it up on a wall. Well, let's go over to contour, select OK, and we have this outer shape of the 3D model selected. And let's not forget to take it off the tapered ball mill. We don't need a huge bit for this, so we can say we'll go with a 3.175 here. Select OK, max depth. We want it to cut all the way down. Oh, forgot to. I want to change this to outside right. Don't want that cutting into all that hard work our tapered ball mill did. Hit OK. Now let's look at our simulation. Hey, hey there we go. Now you can see right here, there's some parts that didn't uh, get cut out. So we could select a smaller bit and get in there, or this looks like something, uh, maybe some sandpaper and some elbow grease could uh, knock out, but overall not too bad. I think we got a piece here that's a little bit bigger that uh, that bit's not getting into there. Other thing I could do is uh, play around with the sizing some and get a bigger piece and do this and give that contour tool path a chance to actually get into some of those areas or we could change it down to an even smaller bit and really get in there and clean those up so we're happy with how everything's turned out we're ready to generate our tool paths so first thing we would do is we would want to disable both of these and then save tool paths once that roughing one's done we'll disable it enable our finishing tool path save it, disable and do the same thing for the contour path, enable it and save that tool path. So you're gonna have three tool paths while cutting this out. So that's the STL import for CC V7 Pro Edition. Really excited to play around with this some more, you know, get some of these settings uh, fine tuned and really start kind of doing more of these 2.5D cars. So since its initial release, we've seen a lot of changes in Carbide Create 7. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room, exporting G-code. Hey, you know what? You can export it now. Does it take a couple extra steps? Yes. But can you? Yes. Always look on the bright side of life. Sorry. Um, but most importantly, I think the biggest uh, improvement here is the STL import. Um, that's going to be fun to play around with. It's gotten me inspired to jump back into Blender and start kind of making my own models again. And then just the quality of life features added. Uh, rest milling, ramping, measurement tools in the design, and there's a whole bunch other. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you all for watching, and remember, if you haven't, hit that subscribe and bell button to keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos, and until next time, remember to keep making stuff.